Yeah, in part three of my detailed modeling course, uh, where I talk about the cross sections for the aircraft, I skipped over the step on actually creating these uh, cross sections, and a number of people have been confused by that. So in this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to create these, and I apologize for, for you know, confusing people and making life harder. So here's the image plane set up. It's set up on the, on the x-axis, sort of at the three key, and I'm looking at it, I'm just looking at it on the side. And these are our cross sections. And I like to start with a cross section that's going to have the most required points. So a circle is probably not a good place to start because it's easy enough to define a circle with just a few points that are evenly spread out. Uh, something like these down here, uh, these are going to require more vertices to maintain that shape. So let's let's try this one as a starting point. So with my mouse, you know, somewhere in here, I'm going to shift A and I'm going to add a plane. And I'm just going to shrink this down so we can see it. And I'm going to go into edit mode, wireframe, vertexes. I'm going to get rid of these two. I don't need them. And these two, I'm just going to move these over until they're just in line there. And I'm going to move this one up so it's right there. And I'm going to hit this one and just GZ it and bring it straight down. Now I'm going to select everything. I say Shift S, cursor to select it. Now we have a line. So now I'm in object mode, right? And I can say right click. I said set origin to 3D cursor. And that's going to put the origin of our object right there. And as long as I'm in object mode, I'm going to hit control A and I'm going to apply rotation and scale because you can see the scale and rotation are messed up over here. So rotation and scale. So rotation zeroed out, scale is one. Back into edit mode. And I want to go to make sure I'm in vertex mode. And I'm just going to hit control R. And I'm just going to, that's going to put a vertex right in the middle of my line. And I'm just going to bring that straight out until it touches the line. I don't need my arrows on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit control R and it's going to bisect the line and I'm just going to bring that out kind of you know along its normal until it touches the line. What this lets me do is it divides the line each time and I found that this method kind of keeps the number of vertices at a minimum. Uh, you could extrude all the way along the path uh, you know, there's a way to do that as well. If you want to, you can, you can hit here and you can hit E and you can extrude and you can, you know, hit E again and extrude and stuff like that. But um, I found that uh, just bisecting the lines with Control R and then just moving it out to the edge kind of automatically gives me almost the minimum number of points that I need to do what I need to do. And you know, I'm just looking for any place where, you know, I've got, you know, a line that doesn't quite follow the line there. And obviously when you're doing around corners, you're going to need a few more lines to follow through. Uh, anytime there's a bend, you're going to need to, you know, add an extra vertex just to, to bend it out. But you don't want to add too many vertices because the more vertices you have, um, the more likely you are to have kind of bumps and ripples in your object. So that's the, the first step here. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a mirror modifier. And because I'm looking at this along the, I'm looking at it from the x-axis, I want to mirror it along the y-axis in this case. So we've already scaled out, already set our scale and rotation, so I just change this to y, and I don't need the x. See how that gives us our mirrored piece there? And I want to add a subdivision to it, and I want to put this up to maybe three, um, just to make sure it's super smooth, and then we can go back into edit mode and make sure it's fully on so we can see what we're doing. And uh, at this point, you could um, just, you know, slightly nudge these things around. Uh, these look pretty good so far. Just get them on the line to where they're supposed to be. And when you do the middle ones, just make sure you move these along the z-axis just to keep them on that center line. The other ones you can kind of move by hand to where you want them to be. All right, so that would be one. And in the previous video, I talked about how it's important to have uh, the same number of vertices for each of these because we're going to loft. So what I do then is, and once I get one, and like I said, I start on the one that's going to require the most number of vertices. I start on that one, then I duplicate that one, and I'm going to move it along the uh, y-axis in this case because I want to move it right to this one. And I want to put my origin right on the center of you know, this frame. Go into edit mode, and I'm going to turn off subdivision now. And this time I'm going to I'm going to scale these up I'm here on active element. So I've got my center one activated. I can move this up to here. Hit SZ, zero. It's going to flatten that right out. And then I'm going to move these, because this is a sharp corner. You know, we want 
points that are fairly close together, because if these aren't close together, I want to hit the subdivision, see how it's going to round that off. We don't want that in this case, we want a sharp corner. So I'm going to just move these pieces, I'm going to hit GG there, just slide that perfectly horizontal. And now when I turn on subdivision, see you get a nice, nice tight bend there. And then it's just a matter of adjusting these points. Uh, sometimes if you want, you can you know, grab a bunch of points, and I like to have active element on for this too. Select this one, or maybe this one rather, so it's the active element. And then hit S, Z to scale, and that'll kind of spread your points out along that way. Um, you can also obviously do it this way if I wanted to scale them right to left to get S, Y, and would scale them that way. Uh, and then at this point, maybe I'll turn off subdivision, but I got a corner here I got to work with. Um, we'll make this the corner bit here. Move that right there. This one goes down here to keep that corner nice and tight. And then these will be here and here. And there, and then move this one straight up just a little bit. And then, of course, turn back on subdivision just to make sure you're still following that line because it can, it can bend a little bit once you turn the subdivision on. All right. And then you may also want to um, maybe select a bunch of these. You know, just shift select it along that. And if you right click and you go to loop tools, you can use the space function, which I have a shortcut control Q, but if you hit space, let me do it over here so you can see it happening. So loop tools, space, and then you can see how I just kind of evenly space these out there, um, giving us a nice uh, distribution of points there. So the next thing to do then would be to rotate these on the Z axis join them together and then you can go in and loft them which is you know if you go back to the other um, episode uh, you'll see me doing this but uh, oops All right so there's a lofted section and that's how you create those vertices and those cross sections and then you just do that obviously for all these now if you jump back to part three you'll see the rest of this um, so again i'm sorry that i caused confusion by not including this step in the original video, but uh, hopefully this helps. If you have more questions, please post them. I try to read all the comments and I try to answer the questions. All right, thanks for watching.